Hello! Today I would like to tell you something about the turning dynamics of ship. So I dare to say some theoretical background for the turning of ships. But I do promise I don't use any formula, only maybe forces will be explained. And what we see here is there's a ship and the rudder is already set to starboard and this is the future track of the vessel. The question is why it comes that the ship is doing this motion. Uh, the initial start is, as you see, the rudder. The question is to what side the rudder is uh, generating a force. And this is uh, the rudder force is like, an, uh, like a, a, a wing, um, a force, a lift force which is pointing, sorry, which is pointing to, to, this, to this port side. But the ship is going to starboard. Why on earth the ship is going to this side, although the force is pointing to the other side? It is because this uh, steering moment due to the rudder is turning, starts turning the vessel. And if the ship has arrived here, a little bit later, then we see the uh, direction of motion is still ahead, but the heading angle is not in the same direction. So there's a drift angle between these both directions. And this drift angle has a very important effect. On one hand, it is increasing the resistance of the ship. So in the future, the ship will slow down and decrease. Even the propeller is still running with the same engine order. But the ship will deviate. This is the most important effect. There's a force due to this drift motion. And this force, uh, you can see here, it is compared, comparable to the forces like an airplane, which an, an airplane is moving in this direction, the inflow comes from, the, from ahead, and then it's producing a lift force, which is hovering the ship off the ground. Um, because this force is, uh, uh, the working point of this force is to the bow or leading edge, the, there's also a moment which we call the unstable moment. Here you see the same um, forces and moment at the ship. So the force due to the drift angle is acting close to the bow and creates a so-called unstable moment, which will further turn the ship additionally to the rudder and so the forces will getting bigger and the ship deviates from the course and goes in this direction. So the next state is here. So we have still the forces due to the drift angle beta and due to the rudder angle delta. But now the ship is already on a circular motion. So and we know from circular motion that there's a centrifugal force which is pointing outward of the circle. And now the most important thing is happening. There's another effect. It's a so-called damping force. And the working point of this force is to the aft of the vessel. So it generates a moment which is counteracting the unstable forces. Uh, by the way, you can this damping force and moment effect, you can compare with the situation that now the inflow to the wing is not always at every position the same and you can compare this with, a, with an airplane wing if the plane is landing then there's at the leading edge uh, part of the wing is going in the other direction and also at the, at the aft edge. So it increases the, the lift that you can land with lower speed. And here the effect is 
that we have the additional force at the stern, which is forming a moment, a damping moment, which is counteracting and balancing the others. So we can see the pr process of steering the ship is you activate a control force, in, for instance, the rudder, and then all the forces are generated and finally they form an equilibrium. So there is an equilibrium of the transverse forces, these four forces we have, and also an equilibrium of moments. And so it comes to a steady state motion that the ship is turning with constant speed and constant uh, drift angle, rate of turn, um, if nothing happens uh, except the, the rudder was set in the beginning. So the question is now, what is what chance we have to have some effect on this turning circle, to make it smaller or bigger and to achieve the maximum turning capability? I've already shown another movie where I demonstrated this with the simulation tool. But here's the explanation for this one. The first one is the control force rudder. If you change this one, then the turning circle will change. So and will, the turning circle will be getting smaller and smaller until the maximum of the rudder effectiveness is reached. Maybe with 35 or 40 degrees uh, beyond this uh, limit, then we have only a stalling effect and the rudder will only maybe uh, uh, decrease the speed of the vessel. Then, yeah, a proper speed. What effect has the speed? Is it a difference if we go with dead slow ahead in the two turning circle or we go with full ahead in the two turning circle? All of the forces here are depending on the speed and all of them with v squared. And the uh, balancing effect is then because all of the forces increase in the same way with v squared the balance of these forces remains the same. If you go with dead slow ahead or with full ahead, the turning circle is the same, even with the rate of turn for uh, lower speed rates are much more or less. So what chances do we have then to change the turning circle? And we mentioned in the demonstration so-called kick turn. If you kick the engines, that means you increase the engine uh, power and so the propeller has a bigger um, inflow, is creating a bigger inflow to the rudder, then the rudder control force is increasing very fast and so we have the chance that the control force is bigger than all the other forces. And, and this is the, the principle you have to increase the control force rudder in comparison to the other forces at the hull, centrifugal force and specifically due to drift and uh, rate of turn. So for a kick turn you can achieve that in the, in the beginning phase that you have a big inflow to the rudder, then the um, um, turning circle advance is much more smaller, but the final state in the equilibrium, if the ship is in a steady state, it's the same diameter uh, of the steady state turning circle as you had before, because the ship, had, the ship has gained the same speed in the final end. Then there's another chance which we have discussed. Uh, this is the um, splitting. If you have a ship with two propellers and rudders, twin screw vessels, or with two pot, with two azipods, azimut propellers, then you have the chance to have, on, so to say, on one engine the kick turn. Maybe here in this case the port engine will be kicked ahead. And the other engine, they go astern a little bit to prevent the ship from increasing her speed. And this has the effect that the control forces are much more higher than the forces at hull. And so we get smaller turning circles, even you can turn on the spot. And the same with the azimut controlled vessel, then uh, you can start with 
both, um, both uh, pots uh, to port side, then you get a starboard turning circle. And to prevent the ship from being too fast, then you take one of the pots and uh, try to uh, decrease the speed. And so you also get a turning circle which might be turning on the spot. The final part of the discussion is thrusters. What is the effect of thrusters? And what we can simply say, if you have a stern thruster, it's the same effect as a rudder. The bow thruster is the difference. And I can tell you why. If you have a bow thruster here in the, in the fore part of the vessel, and this bow thruster is pulling the bow in this direction, then you prevent the ship from drifting. So the ship is changing her course without a drift angle. You see here, the drift angle is nearly zero. And here in the final equilibrium state, in the steady state phase, we have the main forces are the thruster forces, the centrifugal forces and the damping forces. The force due to drift is missing. It's not really necessary. It only comes into the play if um, the thruster force might be too big, so the other forces, uh, they cannot, uh, the, the centrifugal forces cannot, how to say, balance the force, then you might even get, like it's indicated here, um, a drift angle which is negative. That means the bow points out of the turning circle. You see here the, the sample, the, the red one is the thruster with 100%, so there's a drift angle outward, and with 10% is nearly zero. What is the advantage of this control element in the front end of the vessel, a bow thruster? Um, there's, no turn, there's no drift angle, and this has two effects. The first, the speed loss of that vessel, which will, will be much more less with the thruster maneuver than with the rudder maneuver. So the speed loss is not the same, it's more the ship um, keeps her speed. And the other effect is if we, because there is no drift angle, there is no big swept path. The ship is um, like on a chain of pearls and the swept path, the width of the swept path is only the beam of the vessel. There's no big swinging out of the stern or the bow. So this is the advantage. Okay, I hope this explains something about turning dynamics of ships.